Good evening class, this is Professor Hill Cook. I'm here to give you a couple of video recordings of the next two chapters that you'll be reviewing for your exam this week, chapters 14 and chapter 15. Um, chapter 14 is entitled um, Texas Government, the Texas Constitution Yesterday and Today. And so what happens here is that in this particular chapter, it talks about the purpose of the Constitution, why the Constitution was put together, uh, why we have to have a Constitution in terms of the legitimacy of our government. It also talks about that the, the Constitution is here to serve the people and to make sure that even those that may not agree with it, that it still protects all people. Um, there were constitutional amendments in our for Texas, just as it was on our national level, uh, for uh, amendments to be made to the Constitution as th times went on and things changed, uh, laws and things had to be adjusted to meet the needs of the people. So what does it say? The Constitution establishes the only legitimate way to legislate uh, our states. And what the social contract theory, which is something you should probably know a little bit about, uh, is a belief that people are free and equal by God-given rights. And this, in return, requires that all people give their consent to be governed. So what does that mean? That means if we follow under the social contract theory that we believe all people are free by their God-given rights, that then we agree that we all should be governed by something, some entity. And so that's what that means. And so our government is our laws that we put in place, uh, our Texas government. And so it has a right to police us, to, to restrict, to encourage, to um, demand certain things of us. Texas has laws, the speed limit, right? You can't go as fast as you want because there's a speed limit. Um, the right to do certain things are, are, are part of uh, our constitution. And so we turn to our constitution as a way to protect us. Um, from being wrong and not being able to live out our true creed and do the things that we want to do. But the Constitution also limits in terms of by telling the government what it cannot do. So as much as the government can do, there are limitations on what the government can do as well. Texas has had 17 articles added, which includes the Bill of Rights. Um, there's a legislative department, executive and judicial, as is in our national government. Uh, it talks about education. It determines what kind of counties we have. So there's 17 articles that's part of our Texas Constitution. And so we have, over a history of time, there's been seven constitutions um, that were written for the state of Texas. The first one starting in 1827 was when we had our first constitution, and that was the Mexican Constitution. Um, the second one was 1836. That was considered the Constitution of the Republic of Texas. And then I believe our final one <clears throat> was drafted in 1876, uh, primarily by members of a particular part of our state down in Grant in the Grand, Grange area. And it was something that was more or less, <coughs> excuse me, um, anti-government. So the Texas Constitution was written to prevent expansions of government authority and to avoid the return of political power that acted against the interest of the people. So it was created so that government wouldn't grow over and over uh, step, but it also was, was put in place to protect the interest of the people. What makes the U.S. Constitution, the United States Constitution different is that it's, it's a little bit more flexible um, and it's not as long. Texas has a very detailed constitution. I'm not sure where the framers were going with that. So the framers of the Texas Constitution of 1876 placed the Bill of Rights in Article 1, clearly, clearly announcing that the document's purpose was to restrict government power. That was the whole purpose of them coming out in 1876 with this Article 1. But it also established a uh, separation of powers, which of course limits the powers of the three branches of government, which you should know. We have three branches of government on a state level and on a national level. You have the legisla le legislative branch, you have the executive branch, and you have the judicial branch. They are supposed to be equal powers, not one having more power over the other. 
It appears as though we've lost our way there, even in the state of Texas, by what we are seeing our governorship do as it relates to voting and the 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 um, closing of the state, uh, some of the polling locations for people to be able to drop their mail-in ballots. And then you have a Supreme Court of the state of Texas that is agreeing with that. So there are some questions there as to whether or not we are really operating under a true democracy where we do have those separation of powers. We have them, it seems that they act more accordingly when we have a different type of leadership and power than what we are experiencing right now. The state legislature consists of the House of Representatives and then it also has a Senate. The House serves two terms and the Senate serves four terms and that's the difference on a state level and a national level. Um, on a national level, the Senate serves six terms um, and the House serves two terms as well on the national level. Texas judges are elected by the voters, which is interesting because we are in election season here in Texas. Uh, we do not have on our Supreme Court a, uh, a non-Republican judge. I believe all of our judges are Republican. So we should be a little bit more in tune to those people on the judicial ballot um, and do a little research on them to see if they are going to represent your interest. The amendments that happen to our constitution are um, drafted by our legislature, but we the people have to vote on it. So if anything changes in our constitution for the state of Texas, they create a bill, <clears throat> excuse me, and then they vote on it and whether or not it appears on the ballot. And then we the people have to vote as to whether or not we agree. Now what generally happens we don't pay attention to those ballot initiatives. And so we wake up one day and something has changed and we're like, well, when did this happen? Well, it happened while we were wide awake, but we just wasn't paying attention. So that's why it is very, very important that you pay attention when you're voting for everything on that ballot. The, we the League of Women Voters is an excellent website. If you haven't voted already in this election, the League of Women Voters is an excellent website to get some good information from. And for all the candidates, they have questions that they've asked every candidate, whether it's a judge, whether it's a sheriff or a DA, our state representatives on a national level as well. <clears throat> so that's a very good website to, to have and to know a little bit about because it tells you what's happening in the state of Texas. So to recap, this is our constitution. Why do we have it? To help us govern. Uh, didn't want a, a, a government that could overstep it, its boundaries, but wanted one that was going to be receptive and responsive to the people. What we now have to decide as constituents in the state of Texas is whether or not we are happy with how our government is being ran. How do we make our impact known? We show up to vote at voting time, not just on a national election, but your local elections. What is happening in your county? What is happening in your city? Do you know who's running for mayor? Do you know who's running for city council? Do you know who's running for district attorney? in your county. That's important. If you have a concern about the criminal justice system, immigration, education, uh, the roads, infrastructure, those are local issues. So who's representing you on a local level? Who's representing your district in uh, Austin? Do you know what your district number is? If you don't, you should look it up. If you have a voter registration card, it is going to be on there. If you don't, there's a way to, to Google and find out who's your representative for district, whatever your district is, and it'll tell you. And so those things are important to know. It's just as important, and in my opinion, more important to know what's happening in our state because these laws directly impact us immediately. Things that happen in Washington, they have an impact, but the state, what's happening in the state of Texas happens and you know about it immediately. So please um, take time to understand our Texas government and Texas constitution and why we came to have it and just do a little bit of research, not a whole lot, um, because what you see on your slides that are on the um, website will be a help to you. Thank you. Have a good evening.